Hey, how's it going, YouTube? This is uh, John, the, uh, the audiophile pragmatist. Uh, I just wanted to kind of do a throwback video. So I bought some speakers over the last couple of weeks, um, and I haven't got them all in the shop yet and checked out. I bought some JBLs and some Polks and some uh, Eclipses and um, some Bose 901s. Um, but um, what I wanted to really get in the shop first was um, a couple that I had um, in, well, I didn't really have these speakers, but I had them within my reach because they used to sell them at Diorsi's yeah, as a record store in Maine where I was, uh, uh, where I grew up, um, well, went to high school anyway. Um, and I didn't have any money back then, so... I used to go in and just listen to them and then uh, drool over them. But uh, uh, I remember them um, well. And um, and then later on, uh, when I did have a little money after I joined the Air Force, I uh, started to look at some other speakers, you know, like the, um, like the Polk. Uh, I had a pair of Monitor 10s and uh, everybody did, I think. But... Um, you know, we've moved on, obviously. Um, but some of those speakers were really iconic and really good for the time. And, and even with modern electronics, um, which uh, can deliver, you know, better dynamic range and, uh, um, you know, more clarity, uh, some would argue, but uh, trust me. Um, so, with that, I wanted to show you what I have just listened to and give you my opinion. Um, so, from the 80s or so, uh, here is a pair of Boston Acoustics. Um, let's see if I can flip this around. Oh, is it going to let me? No. Anyway, uh, Boston Acoustics a150s and um <laughs> an excellent speaker so i really can't even determine whether this is wood or not if it's not wood it's a darn good job of putting veneer on there yeah it is it is it's just a vinyl veneer but it's starting to come off a little piece right here but it is darn good right it's really convincing but it's a good speaker i mean uh looks to be uh that's about a 10 inch woofer, I guess. Um, and it has a, you know, a nice mid range um, with a good surround on it. As you can see that the woofer is really good. I mean, for an old speaker like this it has no wear um, in a dome tweeter. Um, over here, I can't take the, I can't just take the sock off because that's a major event with these, but this is a DCM time frame 600, which is actually a two way speaker. I think it has either one or two six-inch woofers in there and then a tweeter, at least one tweeter. Um, so it's really a two-way a two -way design, um, but it's big, right? And I'll give you an idea. It's thin, though, right? Whereas this is kind of a, a big cardboard box type thing. This almost looks like electrostatic, right? But it's not. It's actually a transmission line speaker. What I mean by that transmission line is... The woofers in there have this like snake uh, cabinet uh, that um, provides actually much more cabinet in, or, or gives the appearance of providing or gives the um, physics of providing a much bigger cabinet than what it actually has. So you can have this little thin speaker here and it has the same effect of the volume of something like this. Uh, and then also we have... Um, this is a very expensive, iconic speaker of the day, which I could never afford until, you know, recently. Um, this is an infinite slope, so it's like beautiful. Even the back, it's just like this shiny, glossy, um, I don't know what material it is really, but uh, just a beautiful construction, you know, a silk dome tweeter, all rubber, you know, the woofer. It, um, I mean, the mid-range has actually got a tuned um, uh, cap on it. Um, nice woofer with a uh, wood, um, excuse me, a rubber surround. 
Um, it's not going anywhere. It's going to last for a long time. This is actually really, uh, actually oak, right? So the entire speaker is oak veneered and it's done extremely well. Really good furniture, kind of like this legacy stuff, right? And it's really good furniture. These here, they don't have to be so good. It is wood on the top and the bottom, but it's all sock in between, right? So kind of hides the, here's what the infinite slopes look like with the grill on. Um, yeah. Anyway, so what they sound like? Obviously, my Martin lungs are not part of this experiment. Uh, they're not hooked up. What I want, what I did just now is I played a bunch of uh, rock and roll music, okay? So I played, uh, wow, uh, not, not just rock and roll, but some some dynamic jazz, like Mustang Sally. Um, and I played uh, uh, some kind of dynamic folk, like Ed Sheerhan, um And um, let's see, Bad Company, uh, uh, Bad Company, Bad Company. Um, and then really turned it up, right? Turned it up until... Um, you know, my, <laughs> I thought my amplifier was going to clip and that's a 300 watt, uh, peach tree amplifier. So if that's going to clip, it's going to do some damage to some other stuff. Um, but no harm done. No harm done. Didn't get that far, but maybe my hearing, right? So, but, uh, anyhow, what I wanted to tell you is, um, with the rock music, it's just really still depends, right? It still depends. Like for most of the rock music that had a lot of vocals in it, I really liked I really liked the Boston Acoustics, which I paid a hundred dollars for, and the DCMs I also paid a hundred dollars for, right? You won't find that. It just happens, you know. It sometimes it happens. You, you a blind squirrel catch, gets a nut once in a while, but uh, the Boston Acoustics A one fifties. I paid a hundred bucks for, uh, they're a little dusty. That was it. I needed to fix the grills. I did that. Um, but, uh, they are a three-way, right? They have a mid-range tweeter and a woofer. And although they don't play as loud as the DCMs do, right? These larger speakers, um, they, um, have that iconic, like kind of like a JBL L100 or something, like really uh, rich, really forceful mid-range, right? So the vocals, I mean, and the guitars, you know, and the crunchy guitars, like uh, when I was, I've played Badfinger um, and uh, the, the few other rock songs that I don't recall offhand, but I was, oh yeah. Um, so I played the uh, Owner of Lonely Heart um, and some, some other things like that, Triumph, uh, fight the good fight, um, and others, right? So, and I really cranked it, really. And, um, the Boston acoustics really delivered, really delivered with the guitar solos and vocals and everything. And I was just really enjoying it. Um, the DCMs, they were just missing something, right? They're, you know, to be fair, I, I believe there are two ways. It's, it's, you can't see in there. So, I have to research a little bit, but I, when I did, when I, I thought I researched it and I, I understood that to them to be a kind of a, a complicated two way. Um, and, uh, so, and you can tell because there seems to be something missing. There's a mid range missing. Uh, there's, they don't have the slam, um, in the vocals. They, <laughs> my gosh, they do have great drums. If you're a drummer and you play drum solos on these things, they are phenomenal by the that transmission line um design really um rocks i just it's just it just rock um so the drums the percussion in those things are just really super great um better than others any other speaker i have by far um the boston acoustics not um not not so much right they don't have the same ability to um you know to kick like that um, I'm trying to get the phone on them. Uh, they don't have the ability to kick like these, but they do kick well, right? And they, they did not integrate as well with my subwoofer. You know, remember the old big magic subwoofer here? 
And I also have, remember I said I had motors in the seats and I had all that turned on. When I say motors in the seats, if you haven't seen my videos before, you know, that amp that's sitting on top over there of the big subwoofer um, is actually driving these motors that are actually in my chairs, which is phenomenal. If you haven't done it, um, just, sh you know, shoot me a line or whatever. I'll let you know how to do it. Um, it is great because it doesn't pollute your room with standing waves and it gives you a visceral experience um, that doesn't, um, it doesn't occupy your room with, with um, sound waves that you don't necessarily want. Um, it's a great way to do business. Anyway, so I didn't talk about the infinite slopes much and that's for a reason. The infinite slopes here, these guys are, I would say they're, they can rock. They do. And I was listening to, I was enjoying them. They do, they don't rock like the Boston acoustics, but they do something better than the DCMs do. And that they're a full speaker. They're a three-way speaker. Um, they have full vocals um, and they're beautiful. Um, however, uh, they're not as dynamic as either one of the, uh, the Boston acoustics or the DCMs. They're more of a, I want to say, kind of that mini monitor sound, right? They're very precise and very accurate. And you can hear everything, every enunciation, every, in the vocals, every tinkling cymbal, every brass, um, wet, every wet um, characteristic of the brass really comes out of the infinite slope. So if you're a person that likes the, um, you know, the pure uh, audiophile listening of music, I mean, you want to hear everything, right? That's the infinite slope, right? That's the, um, you know, the audiophile speaker of the day back in the early 80s. I, th I think they sold for a grand or something like that. They weren't cheap um, back then. They're probably, if you had to buy them today, they'd probably be 2,500, 3,000 bucks. Um, but A150s, we all saw them. We all saw them at uh, our record stores or, you know, our, our home audio stores. Um, they probably sat next to the JBL L100s and the, um, what else? Uh, the, uh, Technique speakers, which I have downstairs and I haven't cleaned up yet. And also the, uh, um, Pioneer HPM 100s. Um, and, uh, and also, um, I don't have them, but I'm going to get some, uh, the, um, the ADS, uh, the ADS L, uh, series, um, so I'm looking for a pair of ADS speakers now. I think I've got a line on them. I'd like to get them in here and compare them with the Boston Acoustics. Because I remember those speakers being side by side. And I think I preferred the ADS, uh, if I recall, to the Boston Acoustics. Not taking away from them right now, but I would like to get uh, a cherry pair like this of, uh, of the ADS in. And I think I, I, think I have a guy in... Uh, um, in Richmond that's going to maybe sell me a pair. So um, with that, we'll um, we'll go to the next step on um, looking for a rock speaker. Um, again, you know, I could I could go out and buy a pair of JBL L100Ts, you know, off of eBay for $1,100 and something, you know, and would just you know, kick my butt. But we're talking about spending $100 or $200 on a pair of rock speakers that are going to be great right they're going to do exactly what they're not going to be so too tizzy uh they're not going to be so bright that they just drive you out of the room um oh just remind me of something i've got these um i've got these uh uh clips oh of course i've got the clips uh klf 20s downstairs but i also have and i haven't um refinished those so i don't really want to bring them up here and you know all ugly and everything but I also have, uh, let me get some light. Uh, I also have these clips right here. These, um, these are uh, RB75s. And uh, I haven't given them much thought yet. But I bought them relatively cheap, a couple hundred bucks. And I've seen on eBay um, the pair of maple ones like that. Uh, sold for a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, thousand dollars! So 
I really want to get them, give them a fair shake. Um, so I'll probably bring them in here next time. Um, I've also got a tube amp on order. So I will, I will light the clip ship with a tube amp and maybe some of these other uh, speakers here. Um, we'll determine which ones got to be efficient, but it's only like a 20 watt tube amp and it's a, it's a uh, single ended uh, tube amp, which it can't be more than about 20 watts. So um, that's with really special, it's not even 300B tubes, it's big, big tubes. Um, so that, that'll be interesting when we, uh, when I get that in, we'll make a video and uh, we'll, we'll show you that. Of course, I can't tell you, I can't show you the sound of things in here yet. Uh, I, I have the calibrated microphone and everything. I have not set it up. I promise you I will get that done as soon as I get some time. Um, and I will put out videos over YouTube with actually as high quality music as we, pox, we can possibly do. But for now, I only have this, this phone. So uh, bear with me and we will get better videos out. But yeah, so sum it up, right? The Boston Acoustics A150s. Pretty nice, right? That's my pick uh, for most rock and roll. Not all, not all. Sometimes I liked the DCMs better, um, but it just depends on what it is. And there's no magic formula. That's why you can't just have like one pair of speakers, right? So I, I have Mark Logan's right here and they're way in the background right now because I know that they don't rock. You cannot play rock and roll music on a Martin Logan's and be completely satisfied. Um, not after you hear something like this with all these dynamics. So with that, um, thanks for listening. Um, please, please like and subscribe. And uh, as we uh, you know, move through this journey, uh, you'll learn as I learn. And I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.